this is the giant African nightshade. Uh, there are several varieties, the other varieties that look have small leaves. Uh, this is the broad leafed one, as you can see. It's quite broad leafed. Uh, thrives very well on uh, organic manure. You could still do uh, the inorganic fertilizers, but uh, I, I, I prefer just doing 100% um, organic manure from my goats. I have goats over there. So today we are harvesting. Uh, this is going to the restaurant. My restaurant is called Coffee 254. Hey, my name is Caleb Karoga and I believe Ukulima Seo Shamba. If you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing um share this content with other like-minded people who probably are interested in getting into agriculture but they don't know what to get into what to start with in this channel i i discuss the pros and cons of the different aspects of uh, agribusiness from dairy goat farming to beekeeping to horticulture and and my thoughts just basically on agribusiness so I would say this particular variety of uh, the giant nightshade, it's not um, not acidic, I'm looking for a word. Um, it's not bitter, it's not as bitter as the other small tiny variety that has very uh, thin uh, or small leaves. This one um, is loved by many people because it's not that bitter. However, there are other people who like the other variety, the traditional one, the, the, the small leafed one, and you could still do both of them because you never know what your client uh, will be looking for or what was their preference. So here we are cutting. I will go to that guy cutting the nodes and I'll show you how we cut them. So I did a closed spacing um, uh, transplanting. This one I transplanted, I didn't sow directly. I just transplanted and uh, so far so good. We should harvest here. You see this between this node. Let me probably get closer between this node and this node. So we are going to cut here. Let me show you again. We're going to cut here. Then this node will grow. And this is what we are going to come and harvest next time and any other node on the side. So for now, we are going to cut it here. Uh, some will grow a bit bigger than the others. Um, some we have had, we had harvested last time. Look, this we had cut here. See, we had cut here at the top. So the suckers or the nodes, the end nodes, uh, the ones that are growing. So from one plant, you can harvest it for a couple of, say, two months or so, depending again on the variety, availability of water and fertility of your soil. So same crop, you're going to keep it, uh, keep harvesting it. And that's what we're doing over here. Today is harvest day. I'm taking this to my restaurant, Coffee 254. Uh... This one you can mix it with other um, vegetables now let me show you something it's not always perfect sometimes we get um, some uh, either the red spider mite or aphids this one you can just wash it off because i didn't want to spray anything on the managu we call it managu or the giant nightshade uh, so yeah this is not so good but it happens um so i would just wash it off with water um instead of spraying because it's the rainy season uh, that's why when you're told if you have to spray don't just spray on the top just spray also under the leaves make sure the nozzle comes under the leaves and then uh, you'll be able to take care of your crops very well so yeah these ones we have not sprayed they're 100 percent organic and that's why i'm just willing to just wash off this aphids, this looks like aphids, not for the rest of them. It just look like aphids if I'm not wrong. Uh, yeah, they look like aphids. So anytime you see a curled uh, leaf, if it's curled, the chances are very high it has some aphids underneath. Uh, see this other one? If it's curled, there will be definitely some insects underneath. Let's see. Definitely. See that? Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to... Just cut it from the bottom. Uh, so we normally cut with a knife. You could chop it off with hand, but I prefer just to cut it with a knife. So I want to show you how he's going to cut this one. 
uh, cut slow so that they can see where you're cutting the node look at that look at that again like that so if you come he's gonna cut here so that and just wait wait so look what i'm showing you so when he cuts here this node will grow next this bud and these are the okay well when he cuts it from here this one will be next so he's gonna cut it down here so just cut for them so they can see look at that yes so this will grow next focus this now will grow next and on and on and on quite tedious work but uh it makes a lot of sense if you do it like that you're going to have a longer a uh, longer harvesting period of your giant black nightshade it's loved by people people love it like they really really love it uh yeah so today i was just showing you about my giant nightshade uh you could spray chemicals if you want to to avoid the uh, getting the red spider mite and to avoid getting the um, uh, the aphids and any other insects personally i haven't done on this particular bed i'm not saying don't do it i just don't do it uh, as much as i can do it organic I, I will stick to that all right so thank you so much for watching this i'm caleb karoga if you have not subscribed please do if you have please share this video with other people so they can learn a thing or two I prefer showing you short videos, straight to the point. There's demand for this, what we call managu here. There's a lot of demand for it. But then, in the next video, I will talk about how you should be careful when you're planting your managu or your giant nightshade. If you do it during the rainy season and you plant a lot, you're not going to make a lot of money. I'll explain to you in the next video. My name is Caleb Karoga, I believe. Ukulima, Sio Shamba.